Okay, so now we're gonna try a cell. Um, here I have, this is just a beaker of water, and then here is a graduate cylinder with dilute ammonia solution. Um, I'm using lab grade ammonia, which is 30%. You should be able to buy uh, household grade ammonia, which I looked online, should be maybe between 2 or 10%. So I've diluted the lab grade ammonia uh, tenfold, so it should be about 3% ammonia. So what we'll do is, here I have two vials, and um, you could use little disposable cups if you wanted to. And what I'm going to do is, Michael has weighed about 500 milligrams of copper sulfate into these vials. So I'm just going to add maybe half to each side. A balance would be better, so if you have a, some kitchen balance you're going to use, you could put 100 milligrams in each. I'm just going to eyeball it. So these are going to be about the same amount of copper sulfate. If we were to put water on both sides, and then we should measure no potential difference across the two. But what I'm going to do is, on one side, I'm going to put in water. So here's 10 mils of water. And so as you know, the copper sulfate should dissolve to make the hexa-aqua copper tube ion. There it is. Pale blue because of DD transitions, yon color, distortion, etc. etc. Not terribly soluble. So for this vial, which has the same amount of copper sulfate, I'm going to add this ammonia solution. And instead of forming the copper hexaqua ion, ammonia could bind so we can form the tetraamine copper compound. Tetraamine, so what geometry should that be? Think about that. So as you can see, it's a more intense blue. So we are forming a coordination complex. So here it is, here it is, just to the side. So these are our two copper sulfate solution or copper solutions. So one is the copper compound or a copper amine compound. One is the hexa-aqua compound. What we can do is now measure the differences between the react potentials by hooking this up to a voltmeter. So Over here is a voltmeter. It's a slightly different model than the one that you have, but it should operate the same. And you can just change it to voltage measurement mode. And to these two alligator clips, over here, I've added the copper wire. So you have a length of copper wire, you just cut it in two, and now you have two copper zero electrodes. And then we could potentially measure the difference between the two by sticking it in. So I'll stick it in over here. And actually, you can't see it very well, but nothing much is happening. And the reason is because we don't have a salt bridge. So at this point, hopefully your salt bridge has solidified. I've actually only let it sit for maybe 20 minutes. It seems to have solidified. So here we go. I'm just going to put it in there. And then so... Now it should conduct ions, and we will now, I'm not sure if you can see this, but if you can't, I'll read it off for you. And now we'll put these in here. And voila, I'm reading 461 millivolts. So we do have a potential difference. Um, you should look in your manual to figure out which side is which for positive or minus to figure out which direction you're going in. But I'll make a worksheet and you guys can figure out the potential differences for this electrical cell, cell that we just made up and I'll assign groups and you guys can figure it out. But it works, which is great.